All right, so in 8.3, we will look at identifying forces, and basically, we consider two, two kinds of forces, contact forces and field forces. What are contact forces? Um, these are forces when any two objects are physically, or any objects are physically touching each other. Okay? You sitting on your chair, walking on the street, picking up your pen, these are contact forces. Field forces are forces that act at a distance, act, they act at a distance, okay? In this case, the objects exerting forces on each other do not need to be physically touching. So contact forces, physically touching, field forces not need to be physically touching. Examples of these are gravitational and electromagnetic forces. These are examples of field forces. Okay, so like I said, contact forces are easy to identify. Um, I mentioned a few now. However, in terms of gravitational, let's consider the field forces, gravitational and electromagnetic interactions. Um, if we first consider gravitational interactions, actually any two objects right, that have inertia, that have mass, exert gravitational forces on each other. But due to being so small, or the mass being so small, the, these interactions are actually negligible. The only gravitational force that we, we, ex we really can experience, and, uh, that, or that we can feel, is due to Earth. I think we, we agree with that. Okay? Um, now in terms of electromagnetic interactions, which is another field force, uh, most objects tend to be both electrically neutral, electrically neutral, and non-magnetic. So most objects do not experience any kind of electromagnetic interaction. Of course, unless there, there's some um, some of these properties here. Okay. So the conclusion here is, in most cases, the only field forces we need to consider is the gravitational f uh, force exerted by Earth. Okay, so here's a nice exercise for us to identify what kind of forces or what forces are exerted on these objects. Okay, so identify all the forces exerted on the italicized object in each book, uh, in each, I saw book there, in each situation. A is a book is lying on top of a magazine on a table. What are all the forces acting on a book lying on top of a magazine on a table? Can you think about it? Think about it in terms of um, contact and field forces. Are there any contact forces of a book lying on top of a magazine? Yes. Yes. In terms of contact forces, the book is in contact with the magazine. Okay, and so the magazine exerts a contact force on the book. What about field forces? What about field forces? Well, yes, it's experiencing uh, 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 gravitational force. So the book is experiencing both a contact force and a field force. Contact force due to the magazine uh, on the book and field forces of the gravitational force the Earth exerts on the book. Okay? All right, the next one is a ball moves along a tra trajectory through the air. So you throw a ball and it moves, it moves along a trajectory in the air. Are there, consider, what are, the, are there contact forces and field forces? Well, it says here, in terms of contact forces, the ball is not in contact with anything during its flight. And so there are no contact forces. Well, actually, this is an assumption, right? Uh, obviously, it's in contact with the air. But, so there are actually contact forces, the air. But if you are at low enough speeds, low enough velocities, these, uh, the air does not really, the, the, the uh, friction force due to air is quite negligible. Okay. So that's perhaps what they were thinking here. 
is that there is uh, there's no contact force. All right. However, there there is a field force, and again, um, it is a gravitational interaction. Uh, gravity exerts a force on the ball as you throw it through the air. Okay, next one. A person sitting on a chair, uh, a chair on the floor of a room. What are all the forces? Well, there's contact forces. So the person on the chair is a contact force and the floor being applied to the chair from below is also a contact force. Okay, both the floor and the person exert uh, contact forces. What about field force? Again, Earth exerts a gravitational force on the chair. Finally, a magnet floats above another magnet that is lying on a table. A magnet floats above the other magnet lying on the table. What are the forces? Um, are there any contact forces? No, there aren't. Uh, I mean, in theory, it is in contact with the air, but we, um, because it is not moving at a high, it's, it's not moving actually, it's floating. Be but because it's not moving at a high enough velocity, we don't consider the drag of the air to be uh, uh, substantial. However, there are two uh, field forces acting on the magnet. There's obviously the magnetic field force and the gravitational force. Okay? Um, so, contact force, it floats, so it's not in contact with anything. No contact forces. Field forces, both gravitational and magnetic forces occur in this problem. A gravitational force exerted by Earth on the magnet and a magnetic force exerted by the second magnet. Okay, so uh, why don't you try this 8.7 and see if you can uh, get that right. Okay, cheers.